Happy, happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Miles Dyer Live. I'm Miles Dyer, and I am so happy to be back. Not only back in the UK, because I have spent the last just under a week in Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States, which was amazing. And obviously, I'm going to talk to you all about it. Uh, But I actually, as of today, have moved back into my home after a massive, massive undertaking with having my kitchen renovated, but it's also involved knocking a a wall down into my living room where I live stream all my VR stuff. So it's a lot more open space now, which is is excellent. And uh, yeah, I have so much love for my mum and dad who have not only been putting up with me as I've stayed around theirs, but um, both of them have done so much with this uh, kitchen renovation and um, I'm just waiting for the flooring to be done which should be in the next couple of weeks and when that is done I will have a before and after video uh, that I can show you and that'll be very very exciting but also unfortunately I didn't get to do a Miles Dyer live last week I arrived at my apartment in Boston with about 45 minutes to go and I thought yeah okay let's do one I actually had the thumbnail set up it was I'm in Boston but to be honest there wouldn't have been a lot to talk about Boston in particular other than that that I was there and I had a really nice small apartment but um the there was there was a gap under the like the the door going into the hallway uh into into the apartment block um and when I was listening to like music or watching videos I always had the sound really quiet because I just you know when you get that sense in certain places that you just feel everyone's going to hear you? And even when I got into bed in the evening, it, the creakiness of the bed, I just felt like, oh my goodness, this is probably going to wake people up. Uh, but it was a really cute uh, apartment, um, really good time in Boston, had all types of weather. And I've got lots of photos and videos uh, that I'll be showing uh, a bit later. But firstly, I just want to say um, it's lovely to be back. Uh, lovely to see lots of familiar faces. And 
actual faces because some of you in the chat we've got looper we've got brannon in the chat um who i actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, at pax east um uh just awesome meeting some of you in person um and uh i thought that this trip was gonna be a real emotional reset for me because for those that um, don't know 2024 has not been good for me it's been very very disruptive where every sort of pillar of my existence whether it's um you know what i do for work which is always you know purpose that, that had shattered um my sort of um uh financial situation was under strain uh because i was getting a kitchen redone <laughs> and i had this trip planned which fortunately was uh funded by the amazing psvr of our parole community who i'm immensely uh grateful for um so thank you thank you thank you to all of you that helped make that happen and then living with my parents, although I love my mum's cooking and it's great and I'm getting a new kitchen, you know, when you're not living at home, you, you do feel a bit of a disconnect. And I know that I can't stop holding this. This is this. Uh, I got on my last day in Boston and uh, it was just too adorable. And a, a close friend of mine, Ellie, actually, who I used to work with, um, has one of these. And uh, when I saw it, it made me think of her and I thought, I need to get one. There was actually one that was of like a really sad looking duck. That looks hilarious, but I don't know. I like the happiness of this one, so uh, yeah. And when I wore this on the flight home, the air pressure, because basically, I, I hate to dispel the magic, but basically you have these pumps here, and when you do it, there's a tube that goes up, and then it inflates them. Uh, and when I was on my flight home, uh, they went up, and they stayed up for the whole journey. <laughs> so I, uh, I was sat in my chair like this, um, yeah, pretty pleased with myself. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone is doing good. Um, it also means I'm able to do this show now with heating because uh, when I did used to come back, it was when all the water was cut off in the house. Um, I've got a new boiler system in place. It's been a, a very expensive project, but um, it's nice to be in a warm place where I actually have a, a thermostat I can take around with me and I can uh, mediate the temperature. So that's really, really good. Uh, Nick Mew, Low the Game Cat. Oh, good to have you here, dude. Um, how's how's the kitchen? The kitchen is amazing. I'm a bit intimidated uh, because I have all these, like, I have a new oven, I have a new refrigerator, um, so I've got to I've got to start using it. So tomorrow, tomorrow I shall start using it. Um, and and Callie, I'm glad you like the hat. I'm glad you like the hat. And Karina, it's good to see you here. Good to see you here. Um, and je ne sais quoi. Yeah, no, it's good to have you here. I know people can't always make these live shows all the time. And something else I've not been doing lately because of my situation is I've not been uh, hosting any PSVR to Let's Plays. There are about, I don't know, Looper will be able to tell, but um, I'm just going to make this number up. There's probably around a baker's dozen worth of games that I, I need to catch up on. Um, and I could do one tomorrow, but a part of me thinks maybe I'll wait because on Friday, on Friday, it is finally time, people, and I'm going to have to make a promo for this. It is the game that I say we've all been waiting for. Many of us have been waiting for, uh, and uh, it's going to be absolutely horrific. Um, have I got the thumbnail here? Yes, I do. Uh, on Friday, unless I get it earlier, it's time for Madison VR. Uh, which is just going to be the most horrific experience in VR. Uh, for those that don't know, it is rated uh, as the scariest uh, game ever made. Um, obviously, that is uh, up for debate. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> um, we'll be playing this on Friday, maybe the day earlier. It depends. Uh, I need to wait and uh, until I've got a, a, a key. Um, and for, for those that don't know, I was actually offered... Uh, to play the game well firstly i was offered to play it months ago to play a test version uh, and i declined kindly saying look this is one of those games that the first time i play it i want it to be on a live stream so people get my authentic first impressions uh and then i was offered it a few weeks ago just before going to the states um mickey from perp games is going to drop off a, a unit around my house to play um lo love what they do at perp games uh and i declined uh, i think there's been like three occasions i've declined and i've always felt bad because the rest of the parole guys who are stateside they didn't get the option because this was something that was just being done obviously because if you're having to take a, a ps5 around sometimes they do it but um they were just keeping it uk 
uh, wise. And uh, I really wanted to play it, but I just didn't have the setup um, to even capture stuff, even if I was to pre-record. But this means now I can play it and I might be able to play longer than what the demo was. Uh, so yeah, you've all got that to be looking forward to because I'm certainly not. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, sorry, I'm catching up with the chat. The chat is just going absolutely ham. Love you all, love you all, love you all. Um, and wow, there's a Hell Sweeper, um, the foveated, dynamic foveated rendering update. Sorry, that's really, really good to hear. Um, so um, before we get on with the main topics of the show, um, we always talk about a couple of things. Firstly, vitamin G. We always like to talk about what we're grateful for. Uh, and uh, vitamin G. I mean, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here, but I just feel like I can't not do this now. I got these through the post, people. Um, vitamin G. Ba uh, pins. Pins, is it? Buttons, buttons, pins. Badges, badges. Um, my goodness, these are much larger than I was expecting. Um but yeah, uh, got a pack of five of these because I've received all of the samples of my merch. Um, so um, I'll go through them in a bit, but um, can't wait to show you all of them actually. Uh, but yeah, in terms of vitamin G, we talk about what we're grateful for. It could be a thing, it could be an experience, it could be a person, it could be anything. And you don't even have to share it with the chat, but I often pogs. Chris says pogs. Yeah, oh man, I used to have a pog maker machine when I was a kid. I used to love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, so yeah, um, I offer you all a chance to just share in the chat what you're grateful for. But of course, if you don't wish to share it, um, you know, keep it to yourself and that's absolutely fine. Just thinking about what you're grateful uh, in life. Uh, and as I always mention, I do this when my head hits the pillow every night. I just sort of think about three things. Um, and it's really good for you. And also, it's a good way of making yourself feel grounded. M mine's going to be an easy one this week, just after the incredible experience I've had. And it is, I am just grateful for this incredible, incredible community. Um, I know there is some overlap with PSVR Vault Parole, but um, meeting my fellow co-hosts for the first time in person ever was a real privilege. And to meet people in person who um, support what we do, and, and in some cases, uh, support this show. Um, it's just been really, really, really great. Um, Looper in the chat, we actually, on the first evening, got to go out and get some uh, good pizza. Oh, I had so much good pizza when I was out there. Um, but yeah, I'm just grateful for people. Um, as I said, it was a real emotional reset, and uh, I've really made the most out of my four or five days there um, at PAX East, meeting with lots of people, some people I'd known before, a lot of people I didn't, and many of whom will hopefully be coming on the show in the not too distant future because there were some amazingly talented people that I feel have stories I would love to share with you. Um, but I'll, I'll leave more of that uh, to a bit later. But Nick in the chat, and Nick, it was so good seeing you, dude. Obviously grateful for the meetup and seeing our awesome community, amazing to peop uh, meet people for the first time that you feel like you already know. Uh, and that's absolutely right. And it does mean now when I see you up in the chat, I've got a more three-dimensional, literally, uh, view of you. Um, which is always always good. Uh, Cali Vlog says my vitamin G this week goes to Collide Press on Threads. Um, I need to. I've, I've got a Threads account, but I, I never use it. Just lots of positivity uh, and great thoughts, artworks, and networking. Uh, See, I guess there's interesting choice of headwear there, sir. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's really really nice. Um, and it was fifteen dollars. Bargain. Bargain. Um. Let's just have a look, make sure I haven't missed any further up. Um, Cali, you like the vitamin G badges, that's awesome. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, Nihilus Ryan, the game feline. Good to see you as well, good sir. Um, yeah, honestly, it was it was amazing, right? And it's amazing that it's in our rearview mirror now. Is Boston famous for their pizza? I don't believe so, but there was a couple of really great pizza places. Um, correct me if I'm wrong about that, though. Um, Kira Cat Lady says grateful for south facing windows that heat up the flat and general spring vibe so one of the big bonuses of my new kitchen layout is because the wall has been knocked down into the living room my living room used to only get sun the latter half of the day and it was often dark and depressing whereas now it gets sunlight from both sides it gets it from the kitchen window from one half of the day 
and then uh, the the back window, the the other half, and it means I'm going to use it a lot more. Probably work down there, and because I now have a breakfast bar, it means I don't have to like live here the whole time. Because normally I work here, do my evening projects here, and I eat here, um, and so I don't have to worry about spilling my dinner as I'm going up the stairs each time. <laughs> uh, Clem Fandango in the chat says, "I'm grateful for the without parole Discord, so those of us who missed packs could catch up and follow along." And yeah. Something I will say, because I know there were a lot of people that were gutted they couldn't make it, FOMO, all that stuff that I totally understand. I really feel it set a premise of what is possible, and I think it means that if it is done again, it's going to be even more special. And I also I think for people that perhaps, because it, it was an expensive thing to go to, it's natural for people to think, like, is it going to be, like, of course it would be nice to go to, but is it worth going to? And I think next time um, it would confirm for a lot of people that it would be, um, which would be great. Um, Walid is saying I'm grateful for the moral courage of people of Gaza who are coping with losing kids daily. Uh, yeah, we did a we did an episode quite a long time ago now about the situation in Israel and Gaza, and it's just depressing to see it become increasingly worse. And uh, even seeing, I was speaking to my parents earlier today about certain politicians who have like lost family members and or have family stuck in Gaza, and they're on panels, you know, trying to debate it very calmly and you know um they're debating people that often come across as very intellectually dishonest and showing blind spots to what's actually going on there and you know if you were them and it was like you heard people speaking so just so deftly to issues that your own family are involved in um the moral courage that people show is just absolutely incredible uh Siago says vitamin g for the nhs in general going through some particularly difficult health related issues lately so i'm more aware than usual of how brilliant the nhs staff are we're very lucky to have them we are very lucky to have them indeed um 3d views of people is really good absolutely absolutely uh just canic says i'm grateful for my left knee's meniscus is not torn all health health is is what it's about um mojo says my vitamin g is a good cup of tea when the world seems crazy a nice cup of can calm you down speaking of which ah, oh, this gives me so many segues i i will get back to the tea topic um so yeah um Brandon says, uh, great meeting you, Miles. Had a rough week, but hanging with everyone's easily bright in my day. I, if I lay down, sometimes it's hard getting up. Really good seeing you, Brandon. Um, really, really good seeing you. And I'm glad that you uh, uh, you had a good good time. Um, because, yeah, just times like that can be a real good pick-me-up. Um, and, yeah, maybe we'll have to have one in the UK. We'll definitely have to have a UK meet-up at some point. Uh, and Cerebral Frost, Dan, good to have you here, dude. We had uh, so much fun together. And uh, Dan is a true, true gentleman. I mean, everyone was true gentlemen, but Dan and I particularly spent a lot of time, especially on the last day. Uh, I've got some photos here that we'll go to uh, in just a moment. Um, I hope you start to feel better. I've always appreciated your positivity, JH says. Um, I, honestly, the emotional reset. And my, my, my dad, when he picked me up, said it was like night and day for me because I genuinely, even the day before flying out, I was asked, was I looking forward to it? And I said, honestly... No, and I don't really feel like going, but I know that's an emotional thing. I know once I get there, it'll be good. And my goodness, uh, it really, really was. <laughs> we wound up finishing all the chocolate. I might tell this story a bit later. <laughs> okay. Okay, people. Um, the other thing we always talk about is dire discoveries. Um, and this one's going to be an easy one because, as I've already touched upon, um. I um, set up a um, merch store, must have been like, it feels like three weeks ago now, and within 24 hours I took it offline because there was a lot of issues of it. One of you had bought a mug, Canic Tunes, who actually showed a photo of it, and uh, huge respect to you, and I will be sending you some extra goodies at some point uh, as, as, as thanks for that. Um, so I set up a new store, got chatting with the owners of it, and have worked out some really cool merchandise but before making the store go live i ordered about i bought everything on the store it was about 65 dollars or something like that plus postage and packaging it wasn't cheap and they gave me some sample um budget uh to basically order to check it out and so next show next wednesday uh i will be launching the store and i'll give you a, I'll, 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 I'll launch it with a discount um if i can uh for anyone um 
here. Um, and also when people order from the store on this site, I believe it gives me the option to send you a personal video message of thanks, which is such a cool feature. Really, really love it. So um, what I thought we'd do is uh, before we get on with talks about Boston is I would just go through some of the merchandise. So already one of them uh, are pin badges. Um, and I thought what a cool pin badge idea was vitamin G. And so in a packet, you're going to get five. And my question is, I think these are too big. If you want to give it to someone, this feels just a bit, I'm going to, I was going to say obnoxiously big. Vitamin G isn't obnoxious and having large ones. Um, and maybe it is that I just make, I put both types on the store, the big ones and the smaller ones. Um, but yeah, these are, these are nice. The print is really, really nice. But I just thought it'd be a nice little thing that if you find someone that you're grateful for, and actually um, John, my dad's friend who introduced me to the phrase vitamin G that he just used casually in conversation. He just said, I like to practice vitamin G. He thought nothing of it. And I told him all about it. I'm definitely going to give him one of these. Um, but I just like the idea that you can just give a badge to someone that you're you're grateful for. So um, yeah, I think I'm going to get the smaller badges made. Maybe I'll put them both on the store, both sizes, and then people can choose. And then we just, if, if the bigger ones aren't used, then I can remove them. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, so we have badges that are going to be made. Next up, uh, what do I want to do next up? Okay, we'll do this. Um, <laughs> it's amazing doing this because it allows me to sort of think about like changes I want to make before I launch them. I wanted to do a mouse mat, but this is a gaming mouse mat. And my goodness, this is massive and ma mat, mat, sieve. Could I do that? No. I love this and I might I might put this on a shirt as well but um there we go engage inform inspire it is a massive mouse mat I might get it done with just a regular mouse mat as well because the gaming one is just I mean just to sort of show you a comparison regular mouse mat <laughs> and it's so dirty big mouse mat I mean this isn't even going to fit on my desk but um, I love the I love the branding that, that I got designed. It's with my slogan, Engage, Inform, Inspire. Um, I might get this done on some T-shirts and things like this. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Amnesia Pete says both so people can choose which they like. I absolutely, absolutely agree. I uh, just want to say a massive thank you to Kill Artist, the Dreamweaver. Good to see you here, dude. Uh, what's up, Miles? Uh, gods, you made it home safe. Um, yeah, man. It was it was a good trip back. It was uh, wonderful seeing you, dude. Wonderful seeing you, and thank you again for the amazing poster. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you said that looks epic. So that's that's a good one. I like that. And the print's really really good. It's immaculate. Love it. Um. Next up, and I've shown you these on the photos, but now you can see the prints. This is the totes bag. Again, more designs of mine. Uh, this one's cute. I like this a lot. I love the positivity. Um, this totes bag has on it. I just, sorry, I know I say this every week. It was completely unintentional, but the whole, oh my God, for Moles Discoveries, Die Discoveries, I love it because it's just the fact he's looking across and <gasps> at whatever I'm showing. Uh, but there we go. Ah, you call them mouse mats. So much more alliterative than mouse pad. Yeah, I guess we call them both, but yeah, mouse mat. Um, but it's a, a tote bag that says on it, one kind word can change someone's entire day. And basically, as things go along, if the designs are night, you know, do well and they're wanted on different things like t-shirts, then... Um, that can be done as well. So yeah, that's a nice one. I like that one. One kind word can change someone's entire day. Uh, Penguin merch, Karina says, well, Karina, uh, you're in luck because um, I did show it on the last show, I think, but I brought it back just so we can show it together with everything else. Um, I think you'll like this very much. If I can find it. Um, all right, I'm going to... Then there are going to be two mugs. Got the uh, Miles Dyer Live mug. 
I'm I'm really happy about this. And the design needs to be move, move over just a little bit towards the holder. It's a bit far across, but um, yeah, the Miles Dyer live mug uh, is going to be there. Penguin Justice mug. That is it. So here we go. And Karina, um, you can have this when I next see you. Um, or I'll just send you one. But uh, yeah. Uh, there it is. And I just love it with the orange. Um, but there we go. Uh, Penguin Justice. <laughs> Super, super cute. So there we go. I don't know. Oh, my God. Um, so we got those two mugs. Can't find it because you bashed it with a paddle and it's gone now, I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Karina. And Karina loves it. I'm glad. I'm really happy with that mug. It's finding, like, the right merchandise for each item. Do you know what I mean? Because you could just put them all in T-shirts. But I'm just like, I think that's... Um, it works well there. Um, but I'm glad you're a fan. Um, Nick says, yeah, the orange is nice. Um, yeah, who, 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 we need more penguin mugs. Okay, right. And then the last two are the same design, but they're on two different color shirts. So we've got, and tomorrow I'm going to be learning to take photos wearing this. So we've got, Quest for Empathy. Quest for Empathy shirt. I like it. Simple. Nice. And in the collar, it's got the Empathy Arcade icon. I'm thinking of maybe making that a little bit smaller. It's nice, but I think it could be just a tad bit smaller. Um, but yeah, that's nice. Um And then the black one, which is always going to be more my gem. Quest for Empathy. And again, the Empathy Arcade is there. And uh, the, the the store is questforempathy.com. Um, and so that should be launching. We'll launch it on the show. I think that'll be good. We'll launch it on the show next week. Um, but yeah. Um, lots of positivity. I'm glad you like it. It's, it's a lot of these designs I did a year ago, and I, you know, I explained that I was juggling a lot of different projects. And merchandise is something I take very, very seriously. And what I mean by that is, it's not just about designs. It's about finding the right products. You, when you buy a shirt and you wear it, it's very personal because it's touching your skin. You, if it feels, if it's a good, if it's a well-made shirt you're very aware of it and some of my favorite shirts aren't always to do with the designs it's how they feel um and if they're comfortable um and so if you can par a good you know merch design with a good uh like design with an actual product then you're on for a winner um but yeah uh hey miles stuck in an airport layover due to weather but i got the game cats and you'll uh <laughs> to keep me entertained yeah welcome and i'm sorry to hear that about the uh, airport layover Hopefully it sorts out soon. Hopefully it sorts out soon. Uh, Salvador, good to see you there. Uh, awesome mug. You like the mug? Um, but Sal, yeah, please do take care. Uh, puffins, yeah, <laughs> never going to lead that. Uh, we need more penguin mugs is what you should print on the penguin mugs. I could put something on the other side. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they, the, the store has really good lists of uh, shirt sizes. So um, yeah, don't worry about that. Um, cool. So, and, and also I think the prices are really, really good. Um, and the way it works is depending on where what, fa what where the factories are um, will determine the um, the pricing. So I think all of them are can be made in Europe and in North America. Whereas these badges, these took the longest to get here. These had to be made in America. So they will have a, a higher price. Um, but that's something they're working on constantly. So we have that. Cool. Um, so you've got we've got all that to be looking forward to. Um, I have just got back from PAX East. And before I talk about this, I should probably mention something that I should have mentioned right at the start of the show. 
If you haven't noticed already, in the live chat, this week's puzzle uh, is available. So if you uh, click on that link, you will see it here. Oh, there's me in the middle. Uh, it is a puzzle of today's thumbnail. And so basically you click on a piece, click on another, and it swaps them around. And there are 365 pieces left to solve. 364 now. I'm not going to keep counting these. Um, but yeah, if you go to that link, you don't need to sign in to play along. Uh, I made it a difficult one today with the highest difficulty of number of pieces. Good luck, and we'll see how things are going towards there. But the reason I um, also remember this is because it was on the second tab for PAX East. PAX East, as they could say, is a celebration of gaming and gaming culture featuring thought-provoking panels, a massive expo hall filled with the best publishers and studios, new game demos, musical performances, tournaments, and a community experience unlike any other. No matter your preferred genre or platform, if you love games, welcome home. Um, and this was this was so, so good. So, so good. Um, had a really, really great time there. And uh, thanks to uh, PSVR Vout Pro and the community, um, I had my flights and hotel covered and a few other expenses. Um, so I got to go out there, uh, meet my fellow co-host Brian Poole, uh, Wes, AJ, um, people that I've known for years and I've never met in person. And there we were all together and I got to meet uh, some of you who are here, but the GameCat community. And it was great. Um, PAX East is big. You do a lot of walking. And it's a big hall. They had a lot going on. And I think what I'm going to do is just go through the photos I've got. I think this is going to be the best thing. Just go through the photos I've got. And then uh, I can talk about it. Elva... Elvert says, I'm catching up. I'm watching on two times speed. Don't wait for me. Love it. Elva did some great magic tricks. It was actually the first thing I saw when I met him. And it was the Seven of Clubs. Seven of Clubs. Well done, dude. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, headed out. Uh, headed out uh, to PAX East. Uh, the flight out there was really, really good. Um, really, yeah, really, really great. Flew across. There it is. All the way across. Now, I did something very, very morbid when I got on the plane. As we were about to take off. And uh, oh, can I put myself back up here now? Am I back on camera? Mm. Oh, yeah, I've got to do this. Sorry, one second. There we go. Um, I uh, <laughs> We were about to take, take off. Um, and I was flying with British Airways. And my thought was, hmm, I'm going to Google this. And I Googled... When was the last fatal crash by British Airways? <laughs> and it said it was 1985. Now that for me was, and then, then that's why they're regarded like one of, if not the safest airlines in the world. Now that did settle me, but jokingly I did like say, what if this is the one? What if this is the one? Um, flying with British Airways both ways, that it was one of the best like trips I've ever had flying wise, um, both at the airport, the British Airways can't necessarily take entire credit for um, getting on the flight. Um, the flight and in flight entertainment. Um, I watched. Um... <laughs> Low, I knew it. I knew it. Um, I watched uh, the prestige, the prestige on the plane. Um, but also when I was there, I was very entertained by this by the window. And so I so anyone that was following me on Instagram would have known that I was asking about this. And I was like, what does this mean? I was like, does this mean Cyclops from X-Men is on the flight? Um, I, I'm just very amused. I just feel like people that design these, they must be doing it with a smile on their face going, yeah, this is really funny. This is really, really, really funny. Um, so uh, got got to my hotel room, uh, had a nice background and stuff uh, like that. Um, and then I was like, am I going to stay in? No, I'll... I'll um, I'll head out, and so I did, and I met with Looper um, and a, f a few other game cats, uh, Fritz and Sal, um, and this was like the most picturesque pizza place. I mean, that reflection, Regina Pizza, uh, or it's, it's it is it is Regina Pizza, but it's actually Regina Pizzeria, 
And my goodness, um, I was like the last one to order pizza in there, and mine was so good. Um, it was really, really tasty. I mean, seeing this on the big screen now is is really nice. Um, God, this is making me hungry now. This is making me hungry. Um, so, yeah, um, really, really good. And you're right. Sorry, Looper. Yeah, Sal wasn't there with us. Um, it was, Yeah, Latin was there as well. Uh, was it just the four of us? Latin, Fritz? Ye Looper and myself, was it four? Was there four? I think it may, yeah, it must have been the four. It was the four of us. It was definitely the four of us. Um, but yeah, uh, really, really good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, um, super nice. Just great weather on the first day. It was cold. It was uh, it was very, very cold. Um, misleading. It looked sunny. Uh, and it was really, really great. And so, yeah, made it to PAX East. God, I need to like zoom these out. There we go. Uh, I like it's just becoming a collage. Um, really, really great. Um, and it, it was it said happy birthday packs, which amused me because I was like, well, it's every year, so every year's a birthday. But it was the twentieth packs east, um, and yeah, uh, there was that the sign. Uh, big, big hall, uh, and I was really grateful that they gave me uh, a media pass. Uh, got so this was on the Thursday got on the Wednesday, Thursday, and then the last day was on the Sunday. I flew back Monday, Monday night. Um, and when I was there, Looper, uh, Fritz Latin and I, uh, we were deciding what to have for lunch and I spotted this pink taco. And I don't know how many of you remember from a few weeks ago when I was going through the shirts that I'm getting made into a quilt, but I had a pink taco shirt I haven't been to this place in like 15 years and I thought it was on the West Coast, but it turns out it's moved to Boston now. It's moved to Boston. Um, and uh, yeah, um, we went there. I was curious to know if the food was going to be any good. And what was it that I'm trying to think what I was uh, trying to take a, sh a picture of here? Um Oh, this was it. I found it funny that on the, the drinks menu, you could make it a picture because life is hard. Uh, that was uh, how they described it. Um, so went there. I had a, a, a margarita that was really good, full of ice, but um, it, uh, it lasted. It was, it was a really well-made one. Um, and then Fritz for dessert. Look at this. That was Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Always got to show food, right? Always got to show food. Um, so um, I, I was talking about how um, I met a lot of amazing people there. Um, I had like, you know, five to eight panels every day uh, that I wanted to go to. Um, but it was just a question of... Um, it was just a question of... I can remove my camera now. Uh, it was just a question of... Um, um, which ones was I going to see? And I went to barely any just because it was so, so... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, when we were, at, we were... We had an amazing waiter at uh, Pink Taco and uh, Fritz was asking if I'd ever had, like, a deep-fried Snickers. And I, I was like, no, no, we have deep-fried uh, Mars bars in Scotland and I haven't had one. And then the waiter came over and said he'd had deep fried Snickers and then said he went to some place in in rural America went to one of these fairs and they had deep fried butter and like just the way he told the story and you're like what's it going to be butter was not on on the list uh, so was very very uh, impressed by that um, but yeah um, went to a panel and this was my first panel um, and Robbie Miller, uh, Miller, I actually sat down and spoke with, uh, I think the day after. I'm going to try and get Robbie to come on the show sometime because um, it's really cool what they're doing. And um, so basically Stream for a Cause, um, as they're called, and the Centre for Suicide Awareness um, dived into a discussion on how to create a safe space in the world of gaming uh, with an emphasis on game teams, community managers and content creation. And uh, they discussed techniques and etiquette for having... Um, a safe place for the community as well as creating boundaries to protect ourselves from risk and secondhand trauma in difficult conversations uh, and so they were doing a, a, a great collaboration together 
with something called the Pixel Care Program. Uh, but this is something we'll definitely uh, talk about at a later time. But Robbie, really great, was awesome meeting his team. Uh, and uh, hopefully I won't um, be mistaken by this, but I think what he was telling me was that they support content creators who live stream games to do fundraising for charities. And then I think 10% of whatever they raise, they're then given back uh, to then invest in um, in uh, in like new equipment to upgrade their streaming capabilities. So yeah, butter, fried. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I said. Um, you know, Jackbox Party Pack, uh, we went to see the Jackbox Party. I I have to say this wins for best name of a uh, best name of a, an event. Oh, it keeps making me. I don't know if you can see it. Is it going to let me? It's called the Jackbox Party Packs. P A X. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. So they had a stage permanently much smaller stage in PAX East by where all the food was, where you could sit down and just play Jackbox Party Pack. And for those that haven't seen it, it's basically an interactive game. You have quizzes, trivia, drawing games. It's always a bit risky when you do it on a live stream, but there are ways of doing it. Um, and the full team were there. So um, including the guy that does the voice of Cookie, who does, I think, Fibbage. Um, and so, yeah, I met with him and... Uh, they were wonderful. They were wonderful. Uh, so I met with them. And their background, um, and you've got Brooke here, who's next to me, and Spencer, who's next, who's in the middle. Those two, they're, they're, the cre they're creative directors of Jackbox, and uh, they were hosting the show. Uh, on the far left, um, he, uh, he does the voice of Cookie on, on the game. But they all work together. It's all created in-house. Um, and uh, I, I used to just see him every day and chat with him super super nice people um and uh yeah cookie is the og jackbox voice um and their, their background was like uh the improv scene in chicago um so yeah and and as you say jackbox is fun good new year's family entertainment i know i was saying to him like i haven't heard your voice and actually spencer in the middle i hope he, i'm sure he doesn't mind me saying this he does the voice of the evil dude in um what's the uh murder murder trivia the murder trivia game he does that um so yeah um it was it was really really great meeting them um i'm do I'm, I'm dotting around here people on um stuff um i became a proper tourist um and i got um i got the rapid transit map uh and a charlie card which i never i didn't really end up using much in the end but it was a good peace of mind i never had to show it anywhere now when you're using the subway, I didn't realise this because I'm a Londoner. We just get on the train wherever we want. Everyone was like boarding a certain part of the train. I just opened the door and got on. And it turned out uh, it was very, very empty. Um, <laughs> just absolutely empty. Uh, so empty. I got a photo there with the emptiness. Uh, and it turned out that on the doors... Um, as I was trying to exit, um, it gives you a warning saying that, um, where's it? It says it here. Uh, let's zoom right in. For, for your safety, only board or exit at a door staffed by a conductor, except in case of emergency. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I got, I got off the train the right way, but I obviously I got on it the wrong way and I was like, okay. So you can't do it yourself over there. But the train was great. They even had um, like dull decker trains, like uh, two stories. Uh, so like it was like this, look, upstairs, downstairs, which I know in Germany they have. But the UK, we don't even have it. We have loads of public transport. Um, so yeah, that was really, really great. And uh, just the view out, um, just Boston was really, really, really awesome. Um Oh man, I'm dotting around here. Let's have a look. Let's have a look here. What have we got? Um, oh, let's have a look at some clips. Introduce yourself. What are you going to be doing, Brian? I'm Miles Dyer from the UK, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna drink some tea and get scared of video games. 
That, that's a British accent, right? Yeah, that's close <laughs> enough. I was distracted by a spider race. <laughs> I, I was just distracted by something more interesting than Brian. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, Satan. <laughs> The reason you can't hear me is because um, you see that uh, yeah, uh, green and, and red uh, device on his uh, on, on on his uh, shirt. Um, that's a microphone setup I've got. That we we were just testing it, and uh, Looper was in that clip. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. He's on the uh, live show, uh, so yeah, that should be fine. Um, what else we got here? Um, I had already played. I had already played this Silent Slayer game by Shell Games that's on Quest, um, so I filmed um, everyone. But the uh, the Shell Games team, absolutely awesome people. Um, Kat in particular, who was to the right of me there, um, had a lot of conversations with. Um, she works in marketing, really great team. We had a good conversation because obviously Shell Games, uh, a lot of their games barely come to PSVR 2. It feels like they hop away with the line. They do like Among Us, I Expect You to Die. Um, Looper says, oops, I've got to rewind. No need to rewind. I'll do that for you. Um, here we go. There, there he is. There he is. There's Looper there, just, just to the right of me. Um, uh, yeah, fun times. Super, super fun times. Um, so, yeah, and we just had a great conversation about the importance of um, VR. And how uh, you know rising tide lifts all boats, um, but here were the guys having. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean that was kind of the goal. <laughs> cool. And there's Wes and there's AJ. Um, I don't know. The, we're starting at the same time. Yeah, we can start at the same time, right? Okay. okay. And then I think we got one jump scare. So the way this game works is you've got to like quietly remove the, open the coffin and then kill the the vampire inside. What am I supposed to do now? <laughs> this is so funny to watch. Um, and if you make too much noise. I love this bit. Oh, no! <laughs> Their hands get really close. Is that Kill Artist? I saw someone almost fall off their chair when they got me. Oh, here you go, look. <laughs> It looks like that picture, you know, the painting with God oh, no. touching fingers. I think their hands do touch eventually. They made a special, and then, yeah, you've got to detect where the uh, heart is. I wanted to find the jump scare. Yeah, we can start it. at the same time, right? Uh, I can't find it, um, but yeah, that was that was that was really fun. Uh, then uh, we did a games cast live, as in in person. Oh, sorry, it mutes me every time I do a new video. It was done in the hotel lobby. Now the funny thing was, I think I talk about it on here. Uh, was um, I got there for eight p.m. We started setting up, um, and we started at 11 p.m. So I was like, in the U.S., oh, I get to do it a bit earlier. Uh, but no, and there was us. Awesome, right? The team, dream team. Oh, no, 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 it's not between you. I'm sorry. You're just going to pass it back and forth between the two. Can we do this properly? Yeah. And can you believe it? We're in the US. I thought I'd be able to do this show earlier. We're doing it at 11 o'clock at night. We're still doing it at the same time. What's going on, Brian? It's not the same time for me. Yeah, I know. It's, it's later for them. Yeah, really, really, really good. Um, and then we've got Nick here. Oh, man. I don't want to talk about this too much.
Right, I, I, I will talk about this a little bit. Uh, so, uh, let me put myself on camera. Hello. So, they had one PlayStation VR 2 headset in the whole of PAX East. And it was on a booth by PM. Uh, PM Productions, is it called? Um, so, they had loads of flat screen games and they had one uh, PSVR 2. And that was... It was just left there. They didn't have someone like on the Shell Games one, where they had someone that helped you set up, um, that help that that would help you set up the headset each time. So the first day I was there, there was some kid in front of me with his dad put the headset on and took it off within minutes and just went off. And then I put the headset on and like the eye, uh, the eye dial that chooses the distance. They were really far apart. And the lenses were absolutely dirty. There was no microfiber cloth on the display for cleaning the lenses. That should be done between every uh, session. Uh, and it should also be cleaned. It shouldn't be just left up to the people. Uh, I want to talk to Samson. Hey, Samson. Good to see you here. Lovely to see lots of people. Um, so, yeah. Um, we would just every day some of us would just go and i was like cleaning it doing it at service of people nick was doing it here aj did it other times we had lots of people doing it but this clorox uh, a brand we don't have in the uk that is what you would use to clean the headset like all the sweat off and stuff i was told there were some people that were using this on the lenses which is gonna damage it and so it just really frustrated me for two counts. One, this was the only representation of PSVR 2 on the showroom floor, and it was abysmal. Uh, and two, it's um, it's going to harm VR as a whole. If this is people's first experiences, it's not a good first experience. Oh, you need to push it in. Go so ahead. Nick was uh, helping here. I feel very mixed about this. On the one hand, it makes me feel proud to be part of a community that is really willing to champion PSVR 2. But on the other hand, it depresses me that it shouldn't require people like us to do this heavy lifting. Sony should be at these events with a VR booth showcasing the best of PSVR 2. VR is something you have to experience to really believe in it. And you need people there who are going to show you this is how it it is when it's experienced in the best possible way. This is not it. No offense, Nick. Yeah, uh, so very, very, very frustrating. Um, while I was walking uh, through on one day, I kept on thinking about Helldivers 2 that I've been playing a lot lately. And I found someone who uh, had the Helldivers costume and she said, she said, uh, oh, yeah, the helmet, it was just a quick job, like, downplaying it. And I was like, no, that's amazing. The helmet is amazing. Uh, but, yeah, and, and, and as Cerebral Frost rightly says, when we did get it going, we had a decent group, uh, good-sized group wanting the demo of the game. That is very, very true. Um, that is true. That is true. So I hear you on that. Um, also, uh, we had... Um, Oh man, I'm gonna start racing through this. I will just press that. The red button going, the red light. Yeah. Check, check. Cool. Is it record? Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. Samsung, uh, good man. This is the first AI automated scent release system that brings your in-game worlds to life. So basically, you have these different containers in it. I'm gonna edit this and upload a clip of it on my socials. But basically, these are containers. Uh, that release smells. Buddy. Yeah, no problem. See so it hears, um, if it hears gunshots, it starts playing the sound of gunshots. Um, if we got, uh, oh, we've got photos here. So clean air scent, that cleans it after you've used it. Storm, forest, racing cars, gunfire, and explosions. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was... Um, it's, it's really, really cool. They wanted to set me up with one. I totally f ran out of time with seeing them at the end, but this is something I definitely want to incorporate into a Let's Play. I've just got to find the right VR game to do this with because uh, I think that's going to be it's going to be great. Yeah, Gamescast is in five minutes. Um, UK time is pretty close at the moment. 
Um, but to show you the scale of it, this was on a quieter day. So what you're seeing now, all these tables are people are tables where you can get a board game and sit down and play a tabletop game. Look at all that. That is just like that's the non exhibition part. And then you've got all these PCs that you can just play on and game on. And then they also had VR that was sort of hidden away. Um, really, really cool. Whereas on the other side, uh, they had... Let me see if I can find this. This was when there was a, a battle happening. It was cool. It was it was it was super super cool. But something else they had was um they had all these really cool rooms. So they had like this room where you could play retro games. All these different retro devices and at the back you could pick up games you wanted to play. But they also had this, which was um, a speed run room where they had speed run competitions. So this one, the speed runners had to play complete four levels in four different games back to back. So Donkey Kong Country, Tetris, Castlevania, and Aladdin, and it was cool, man. Like just the the, the audience was just great. Um, and then uh, they also had this. Got a fondness. There we go. Huge metal monster built to destroy anything in their path. You know, for kids. Well, consider this area a mech pilot training school, complete with instruction manuals and expert guides. So you basically control a mech warrior with all these different controls. Well, they tell you how to do it, and then you battle each other. And that was super, super fun. So much fun that I decided to give it a go. Um, and Dan was there. Um, let me find it. Where is it? Where is the clip? I mean, this was this is everything you were doing. And agree. Totally agree. Totally agree about that. You have an eject button. Mine didn't have the plastic that you normally have to remove to do it, which was super, super cool. Really, really cool. Um, and I was happy. <laughs> really, really fun. So they just had like lots of really cool experiences. Really cool experiences. And they also had really, really good food. Um, let me have a look here. Just a couple more things. Um, well, I spotted uh, IGN. IGN were there at a uh, limited run. And that is Seth Macy. And for those that don't know who Seth Macy is, really awesome guy. He actually presented the PSVR 2 review uh, for IGN when it first came out and it got a 9 out of 10. Um, I actually caught up with... Uh, let me just close all this down one second. Hello. Um... I actually, oh, Tiff, good to see you, Tiff. Oh, man, so many people. And what in the world is Mars One? I, what do you mean? I like it. Yay, I can wave goodbye and hello. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, Seth, I actually sat down with and had a really good conversation, um, just finding out, like, how he got into IGN, his background, uh, and I asked him, like, from my perspective, what would he recommend? And so he gave some really good advice. Um, I'm not going to go into it now, uh, but I've got a battle plan of engaging with IGN, so I would say watch this space. Um, but, I mean, there's just so much. There is just so much to uh, to talk about with this. Um, it was really, really great. Oh, I guess I've got to show you this from the, uh, from the video thumbnail. Um, this made it worth it. There we go. Pikachu. Pikachu was an absolute legend. Absolute legend absolute legend and what was also legendary was the uh, PSVR 2, PSVR without pro community 
who made this meme. I obviously didn't get the hat memo. <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, so, so much. Um, there was a lot of great food um, on the final day. Um, uh, Tiff, Dan, Lynn and Fritz and I, forgive me if I've forgotten anyone else, uh, we went on a walkabout and uh, we found uh, this. Gordon Ramsay's uh, burger place. And my goodness, it was so, so good. Um, I mean, the burger I got, I actually went for a, just a, like a, a traditional burger. Um, it was so good, man. It was so good. And uh, the fries, the fries, that is not cocaine on them. Um, so just to describe you what I got, uh, where's the menu? They had the idiot sandwich. Uh, so Gordon Ramsay, really, really, really great. Um, but uh, the menu, yeah, what did I get? Oh, no. I took a picture of the wrong side of the menu. So mine had a ha roasted jalapeno in it and avocado. Um, Dan had um, onion rings, and this is what they look like. Amazing, amazing onion rings. Um and then I oh Tiff had was it Tiff did you get the uh, lucky the lucky charms um, and by the way those fries sweet potato fries vanilla powdered sugar honey jalapeno aioli um, really really uh, good um, super super tasty um, but yeah Tiff had like the lucky charms milkshake I just got this like Oreo milkshake that was oh my good I and then we went to Cheers went to Cheers. There's me at cheers, cheers. Uh, lots of touristy stuff, really, really fun. Um, and yeah, just, it was such an amazing time, such an amazing time, and this is all making me so hungry. I shouldn't be eating before I go to bed, but maybe I will. Um, but listen, people, um, I could show a lot more of this. I've tried to skim through it as much as I can. But here's the key takeaway. Um, this trip was such an amazing emotional reset for me. Um, I feel so energized. It's helped me have some more focus in my life. It's meant I've been able to come home and hit the ground running, especially since today I've moved back into my house uh, with the new kitchen, which is amazing. But just meeting the community, meeting people in, in person is always wonderful and really serves as an amazing reminder of why we do what we do. We do it because um, for us in, in PSVR Vout Pro, you know, VR is a great uh, connector. When it comes to Miles Dyer Live, you know, sharing experiences and having fun together, it's always really, really important. Um, and I hope that we can do many, many more of these. So, yeah, that's me going to wrap it up because I, I know that Gamescast Live is starting three minutes ago because uh, the US and us uh, are four hours apart, not five. Our clocks spring forward uh, this coming weekend, I believe. So, yeah. Um, that is a wrap for today's episode. Let's see how we're doing with the puzzle. Oh, wrong tab. Uh, how are we doing with the puzzle? Oh, wow, you did it. <laughs> amazing, amazing. That makes this a near perfect show. The only reason I say it's near perfect is no show is ever perfect. But hopefully you can also tell from me, because I'm saying this like reflecting on it now, I'm definitely this way, is I'm in a much I'm in just much more energized this week. I feel great. The future is exciting. It is uncertain and there are a lot of things I still need to deal with uh, in my life. But I am so, so uh, grateful for all of you. Um, whether we have managed to meet or not, um, just the fact that we get to spend time together doing this. Um, and I'm really, really excited for everything else that is to come. So with all of that said, we're going to wrap it up there. Do hit the like button uh, before you leave. And if you are new, do subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of all future Let's Plays. And next week, we will be launching uh, the Quest for Empathy store, unless something goes wrong in the meantime. Something could always go wrong, but hopefully not. Um, so on that note, I'm going to leave you with a photo of Boston. Uh, this was so lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, love, respect, empathy, and adios. Till next time. Bye-bye, everyone. See you next week.
grateful for all of you um thanks everyone for tuning in it was really good oh goodness i honestly i've been so tired today jet lag jet lag is a killer on the way back because i'm gonna say unless you're super good or you're in first class where you get an actual bed my flight was at five minutes to eight at night um five hour flight land at six th- six o'clock in the morning um so you are losing that whole night and I didn't sleep so I got home at 8 p.m thanks to my dad who picked me up and then I went to bed for two hours till 10 a.m uh then went to here to help out with some of the final bits of work uh in my house had a had a work meeting at 1 p.m uh and then I was dragging in the afternoon by four o'clock four o'clock I was dying to go to sleep and I thought I just need to hang on I did some VR fitness to sort of wake me up and then um I then went to um uh I went to bed at 7 p.m I think 7 8 p.m I think no 7 p.m I went to bed last night and then I woke up thinking I'd had a full night's sleep it was 9 30 at night two and a half hours later didn't feel tired Stayed up till midnight, went back to sleep, woke up at 11, 11 o'clock this morning. So, uh, yeah, jet lag is a real deal, real deal, real tough, real respect for people that can deal with it. However, I hope that once I've got through tonight, I'll be back. Um, but looking forward to getting into a routine of going for walks, getting lots of sunshine, especially with spring on the way. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, got a lot of social posts to do, got a lot of Let's Plays to plan a lot of live streams but it looks like Madison might be the next one which is going to be absolutely horrific and I'm going to be so proud of myself if I do this because it is going to be so so scary uh so yeah all right everybody have a good week and uh, I'll see you in the chat on gamescast if you're watching live bye bye